What's up everyone? This is Real Chemistry. Today we're talking about naming alkanes with substituents. What's a substituent? Well, a substituent is something that's on our alkane that's not carbon or hydrogen, okay? So if I look up at this molecule above, what on there is not carbon or hydrogen? Well, pretty plainly, the fluorine. And that, in fact, is the substituent in this case, fluorine. So we're thinking about naming our alkanes when they have something on them that's not carbon or hydrogen. You might be wondering at this point, why do we care so much about these alkanes? Well, the reason is, is if we want to understand more complicated and interesting chemistry, like say the chemistry that goes on in the body with proteins or with uh, medicines, then we need to start by understanding the basic organic chemistry molecules. This is like our building blocks to get to the exciting stuff that's really cool. Okay, so we got to start somewhere to get to those really cool things. How are we going to name these things? Well, there's a whole list of rules that we're going to go through. And if I give you all the rules now, it would feel overwhelming. So we're going to go one rule at a time, and we're going to work a bunch of practice problems as we do it. So this first rule for naming alkane says number the carbon chain and write the base name. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to count the carbons. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what that means then is that if I look up my uh, alkane chain lengths, I see that five carbons goes with pentane. So this is a pentane. Now it's not just normal, regular old pentane because, right, we have the fluorine on it. So how do we tell people that there's a fluorine there? Well, maybe we could just write like fluorine pentane. Okay, you could do that. Two problems there, fluorine, that seems a little long and ugly. And the second thing is, how do I know where the fluorine is? Maybe it's on this carbon, or maybe it's on this carbon, or maybe it's on this carbon. I need a way to indicate that. And as you might expect, I'm gonna use the numbers I just drew here to tell me where it goes. So this brings us to our second rule that's gonna help us name this molecule. We always give the substituent the lowest possible number. Here's a list of common substituents, okay? Fluorine, we name fluoro. Chlorine, we name chloro. Bromine, we name bromo. And then if we have carbon-based substituents, so that is there's just like carbon chains hanging off, say for example, there was CH3 here. That guy is like a methane because there's one carbon. And so what would we name it if we used it as a substituent? We would name it methyl. So we just change the ending to having that little YL there on the end. If we had two carbons hanging off, we would change it to ethyl, okay? So, uh, that is how we add our substituent names, and we always give the substituent the lowest possible number. So let's finish naming this guy. We did go ahead and number the carbons this way. One, two, three, four, five. Totally sensible way to number, but that's just because we write left to right. That's why we did it that way, right? If I wrote right to left, as some cultures do, I would have numbered it this way. Well, which number is correct? Is this the fourth carbon or the second carbon? Well, that's why we have a rule to decide this. We just always give the substituent the lowest possible number. So it doesn't matter which side the fluorine is drawn on, we give it the lowest possible number we can, and that's how we indicate the position of that substituent. So this one would be named 2 dash fluoro pentane. So now we've told you where that fluorine is. And we always put a dash, we always put this little dash whenever we go from a number to a letter. Okay, so we have two fluoropentane. Let's go ahead and try another one. Now, for this one, we're gonna need one more rule. This one says for multiple substituents, list them in alphabetical order. Okay, so do I have multiple substituents here? Plainly, that's why I gave you the rule, but let's check out what they are. Let's start by numbering the carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now notice we have two substituents. We have a bromine here, Remember, that guy's not a carbon. Some people like to count that as a carbon. Doesn't count, because there's a bromine written there. And then here, we have a carbon hanging off. Now, that's a carbon. It's not a part of the main chain. I can't make one continuous chain and just make it a seventh carbon. It's not heptane. If it was heptane, I would have another carbon here. But instead, it's just having this methyl group hanging off that second carbon. One thing that's kind of nice to do when you're first new at this is just go ahead and put CH3 there. And that reminds you that we have another substituent there, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and give the substituents the lowest possible number. So the other possible way we can number them is by starting at one here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Clearly that gives us worse numbers. So we're not gonna use that because that would put our substituents at five and six instead of one and two. So we're gonna put them at one and two. And now when I name it, that's where this third rule comes in. For multiple substituents, list them in alphabetical order. Okay, so what's the base name? 
The base name is hexane because there's six carbons. So we'll start with hexane and then we'll add the substituents. And we're gonna wanna add them in alphabetical order. So the BR, remember, is bromo, and the CH3, remember, is methyl. So B comes before N, so we're gonna start with bromo, and we wanna indicate what carbon that's on. Well, it's on the first carbon, so we're gonna call it one bromo. And then I put a dash, because I'm gonna write another number. And we're always gonna put a dash between numbers and letters. So I'm gonna put bromo dash, now where's the methyl group? It's at the second carbon, dash methyl. So notice there's another dash there, because it's again going between a number and a letter. So anytime you switch back and forth between a number and a letter, you put a dash. That's kind of a minor detail. If you get that wrong, not the end of the world. Um, but that's the rule, is there's always a dash between a number and letter. So this is one bromo, two methyl hexane. Okay, so we're continuing to build these rules up. Let's take a look at another molecule. Here we have two substituents, once again, a fluorine and a bromine. This is a really common one for us to miscount carbons. Remember that this is not a carbon, and this is not a carbon. So when we count our carbon chain, we're gonna go one, two. Okay, uh, we could alternatively name it one, two in the other direction. Which one's better? Well, here we need another rule to tell us. Should we give bromine the one or should we give fluorine the one? You might have a guess based on our last rule. And it's really a clarification here to our second rule, which says give the substituent the lowest possible number. If there's a tie, like there is in this case, because we could give either of them one, we prioritize the one that's first in the alphabet, right? So we could name this one two, or we could name it one two. Because bromo starts with a B, we're gonna prioritize this one. So this one gets priority because it's first in the alphabet. It comes before F. And so we're gonna go ahead and erase the pink numbering. We're not gonna use that. And then we are gonna grab the base name of our chain with two carbons, that's ethane. So two carbons is always ethane. And then we're still gonna list our substituents in alphabetical order. We'll start with the bromine because it starts with a B. So we put one bromo and then we put a dash and now we have two fluoro. Let me give myself some more room to finish off this name two fluoro, and then lastly, we finish it up with ethane, okay? One bromo, two fluoro, ethane. That's the name of that molecule. All right, now, when we have multiple identical substituents, we're gonna use di, tri, or tetra to indicate that. Let me show you what I mean. Here in this long chain, we're gonna once again start by numbering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or we can number it the other way, one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice that we have two substituents here, two carbon groups hanging off. We'll put the CH3 on there to help us remember that those are in fact methane. All right, now which numbering system do we wanna use? Do we wanna use the pink or the blue? Well, actually you'll notice it doesn't matter because in each case we have three and five as the numbers. So either of those numbering systems is equally good. We'll go ahead and just use the blue just to keep this simple. Okay, so we'll use the blue, either one's totally great. And now when we go to name it, we once again, we'll start with the base name, which with seven carbons, it's a heptane. So we write the base name. And now we wanna indicate the substituents we have. Well, we have two CH3 groups. Those are methyl substituents. And they occur at the three and the five. So what I'm gonna put is three comma five. So we're always gonna separate, if I have multiple numbers, we're always gonna separate those by commas three comma five, and I know I have methyl, but to make it clear that I have two of them, I'm gonna put a di right here. So that's three five, dimethyl heptane. As you can see, these rules uh, are not necessarily super intuitive, so it takes some practice to get them down. And the good news is, is you're gonna use these over and over again in different contexts until these rules are really very easy to remember. Okay, one last little caveat we gotta add here. We have all our rules, but we do need to refine the first rule just a little bit to make it work in all cases. Check out this molecule. Now, if you just named it, you'd probably start by getting, naming it one, two, three, four, five. And you might say, oh, okay, I could number it the other way, one, two, three, four, five. And those are totally reasonable ways to number it, but what it misses is actually there's a longer carbon chain. So what if, for example, we'll use orange, if I numbered it one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice if I highlight this carbon chain, I actually get a longer carbon chain. So which one should I choose? 
Lots of different options there. Well, I need to clarify which one I should use in situations like this. So I want to number the carbon chain, but which carbon chain? Well, the clarification to rule number one is we use the longest possible chain. So what that means is the orange one was on the right track. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we got six carbons in this chain. And now, of course, once I've picked the longest chain, I could still number it either direction. So I could go one, two, three, four, five, Six, which one should I use? Well, one of them gives me three and five for these substituents. And one of them gives me two and four for the substituents. So which numbers are lower? Well, we want to give the substituent the lowest possible number. Remember, that's rule two. So we're going to use the pink numbers because those give the substituents the lowest possible number. So let's go ahead and use the pink numbers. We'll erase the orange ones. Get out of here, orange numbers. You're wrong. So we're gonna use those. And in this case, once again, we'll add the CH3 explicitly. So we have carbons at the end of these, right? So we're gonna go ahead and put CH3 and CH3. And now when we think about what substituents we have, we have methyl groups. So once again, we'll start with the base name. Six carbons is a hexane. We have six carbons in our main chain and that determines the base name. And then we have two methyl groups. Those methyl groups occur at two comma four. They occur here and here. And then I put a dash, and now I'm gonna use di, because I have two methyl groups, dimethyl hexane. So that's two for dimethyl hexane. So that's a basic introduction to the rules. And here is a complete list of our rules with all of those caveats. So this is a nice thing to take a picture of, to have as you go through more of these problems. Thanks for watching this episode. Ask any questions you got below.